this is the Bells of Steel Belt Squat Review. Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And we are here in the garage today to review a Garage Gym product. This is the Bells of Steel BOS Belt Squat 2.0. This is definitely not the first belt squat we've reviewed or used. We've reviewed and used just about all of them out there from the Rogue Rhino belt squat to the Squat Max MD. I've used the Matt Winning belt squat, which this is kind of based on some of that design, the Titan Fitness belt squat, the Sornex J squat, and many, many others. This is a product where there's a lot of competition and this one in particular is trying to hit a value basis. So it's trying to be at a low price point while offering a lot of features and have a design that is like actually something that lifters would use. I've actually seen this in Dexter Jackson's, the 2008 Mr. Olympia winner and just all around bad to the bone dude in his garage gym that he trains with. And so this is a product that we've been asked about. We saw it at the Arnold and it's been out for a while, but we haven't reviewed it yet. So we want to get it in and give you our opinion. Now we're going to walk through the assembly. We're then going to talk about the features and kind of what they wanted it to be. We're then going to show you how it works and how I would use it. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about my opinion and how it compares to the myriad of other belt squats and where we think it lies and who, if anybody, we'd recommend it for. So let's do it. I went into this looking at it thinking, hey, this is going to be a fairly simple assembly, right? We got a square metal base. We got some J cups, some uprights. This, this is gonna go pretty smoothly, pretty easily. About two and a half hours later, I was questioning my own sanity on if I should even be assembling products. The biggest mistake I made coming into this was assuming that because of this nice, awesome, huge steel platform that everything would just bolt to it and it automatically be squared and so everything would just would just go in automatically however i should know just like everything else it wasn't perfectly squared overall it's a fairly simple build if you start out with that that premise of hey i need to keep everything loose and then tighten it down at the end it is 265 pounds so it's fairly heavy it does come packaged in two boxes but whenever something comes in brand new that you just paid a thousand dollars for you want it to not have little scars and marks and look like it fell off the back of a truck the only other i would say issue uh, that we ran into is on some of these lower areas here um, if you look like down here in this triangular area and down here as well, this is a pretty small area to be able to get a bolt into that is a couple inches long. And so that, that took some figuring out on how to do that. We eventually got it, but it was about a 30 minute time burner to try to figure out how the best way to work those in there. Uh, it, it wasn't relatively easy to do. Now, for those that have never used a belt squat, they're designed to allow you to squat without a actual load. So they're basically taking all the pressure off your spine. If you think about squatting with a barbell, like I've got behind me, that sits at the top of the spine. So there's a lot of benefits to that, but there's a lot of people that have lower back problems, shoulder problems, and just things where it doesn't feel good or literally like not allowed to as prescribed by the doctor to squat with a barbell. This allows you to do that. Now in a home gym, a piece this big that only does one thing is not a good piece of equipment. So this can also be used for other things like you can use it for deadlifts or shrugs or bent over rows. You can do curls technically. There's just some other things that you can do with a belt squat. Now this design, as you can see, is a lever design. What that means is there's a fixed point and then there's an arm that comes down and then it pivots off of that lever. The reason that people do this design is because it's one of the cheapest to make. The problem on the other side, which I'll talk maybe a little bit more later about this specific design, is that you are going to have some forward knee travel, meaning you're not able to squat directly, completely up and down. The longer the lever, the less forward knee travel you'll have. So if this was say 10 feet, you'd have much less, but because it's not crazy long, 
you're going to have some that said, I think this overall design and for the price point, like it's to be expected, you get what you pay for and there are going to be some issues. This is not my favorite design of belt squat. If you're just wanting like the most expensive belt squat that's out there and like the best for your body, there's other versions that I'd recommend, but this hits you incredible value basis. And so some of the things that they look to, to like create good features on this is one, this platform. So this platform is solid. Like this is a metal platform with three millimeter thick top. It's fully welded. This thing is not moving. So I don't care how strong, how heavy you're lifting or how big you are, you are going to feel very stable on this platform. I love what they did with it. I do like sometimes when they put diamond plate on there because it adds some extra grip, but this is a somewhat textured powder coat. And so I don't ever feel a problem with grip. In addition to that, they use some like heavier duty components. So these bushings here, like these are commercial bushings, like these are taken from commercial applications and just applied to this. It's obvious that they're not made for this. You can tell by the color and just their design, but these bushings are designed for a lot of poundage and a lot of volume, more than you'll ever really need or use in your belt squat or in your home gym, so it works. The other part of the design that is made for home gyms is it packs down so they can ship it pretty cheaply. So when we first saw this at the Arnold, they told me 900 bucks shipped and I didn't believe them. What's the price point? 900 bucks. Shipped? Now, one thing that they thought of that's really smart is these vertical horns. The reason vertical horns are nice is number one, it is a little bit easier to take the plates off. One like pro tip I'd suggest is if you put a plate on, put like a small rubber washer or change plate, something like that in between the plates so you can get your fingers in. Just makes it a little bit easier to remove the plates because it can be very annoying if they're just stacked and pressed against each other. But in addition to making it easier to remove, it also prevents the plate from hitting the ground, which means you can hit a lower depth of squat more easily. That's a huge benefit. And one reason that I didn't like the Titan belt squat when we reviewed it in the past is because you couldn't hit depth. The other thing they thought through, they have this cutout in the floor. This cutout in the floor is nice because this front arm, it allows it to go deeper in, which then again, gives you a greater depth of squat. The depth of squat does matter. Any belt squat that doesn't allow you to hit full depth, which is essentially your thigh parallel or below to the ground, Essentially, you should be able to hit more than that, but that should be the absolute minimum. That's a belt squat that I would not recommend. This allows you to do that, which I really like. In addition to that, they allow you to have these J cups that are able to adjust up and down in these holes, similar to an upright on a squat rack. So it's just very easy to change for people of different heights. You don't really want to do it when you have weight on it, but if you do it before, you simply lift the lever, take it off, and then move it up and down. Set it in and then set the belt squat on it. So it's easy to maneuver, easy to set up, and works for a variety of body types. They've also thrown band pegs on here. Band pegs can be nice, it's accommodating resistance. The further away you are from the point, the heavier the resistance is, the lower, the closer to the point, the lighter it is. This allows you to load both weight and resistance via band. So it's a nice addition. And then it also comes with this. Now. That's kind of how they designed it. This is a big platform, understand that. There are more things you can do with it, but it's really designed to be a belt squat. Okay, let me show you how the BOS Belt Squat 2.0 works. Cue the music. Now I told you kind of the features and what they are looking for about this. Let me tell you how it compares to others that are out there. Now the belt squat I have in my garage gym is the Rogue Rhino belt squat. And I would say that's probably the most popular and best selling belt squat in the world. It's designed on the West Side ATP belt squat. It's a cable system that uses a cable straight through the floor. The reason a cable straight through the floor is nice because you're squatting directly over the point. So rather than a lever, there isn't as much forward knee travel. The problem with it versus something like the Squat Max MD, which in my opinion is the best belt squat simply for squatting. I don't think it's the most versatile. I do, th I do like the Rogue Rhino better than the Squat Max MD for most home gym owners. But the reason that the Squat Max MD is nice is because it uses weight plates freely distributed straight underneath 
and allows you to have, based upon testing, more glute activation, more quad activation, and more hamstring activation. The problem with a lever style like this is you can have a tendency, one, to have forward knee travel, and two, to push up back against it, and that same thing can be seen in a cable system. But the reason I like the Rogue Rhino is because it can be used for so much more than just belt squats. Something like this, you're gonna have a really hard time setting that up. I think it's possible, but you're gonna have to maneuver it around. It's just not practical. But this is really designed to hit a price point at a value basis. This versus the Titan belt squat, I think this is better. It's more expensive. The Titan belt squat is around $600, $700, depending on sales. This is $1,000. Both of them have free shipping. I think this is worth spending $300 more, mainly because you're able to hit a better depth of squat. And that's something I think a lot of people need to do. Now, one other belt squat I wanted to mention was the rep belt squat. It's basically a design that sits in their rack. There's problems with it. It doesn't allow you to hit depth. You have to have their lat pull down, but man, the price is great at $300. For most people, if you're looking to belt squat, I wouldn't recommend that one simply because it doesn't allow you to hit depth. Like you just aren't able to hit all the way down. And because of that, it's just not the level as something like this that does allow you to hit the full depth. I think that's necessary to squat. So ultimately the things I have issue with on this is one, just the general design. I don't love the lever design. I think there are better out there, but you're not gonna be able to get anything else besides that for less than the cost of this, right? Like you basically you're either going with a lever or you're spending a lot more and you're able to get like a cable-based Rhino system or a Squat Max MD or something like that. Overall, for the price, I would recommend this for those that are looking for the best budget belt squat that aren't looking for like an arm or something that attaches to the rack. Standalone, this is my recommendation. Okay. What do you think about it? Is this a belt squat you would add to your garage gym? Many people are adding belt squats. They take up a lot of space. That's one of my issue with this, like takes up so much space. You have to really need a belt squat. Whereas with some of the others, the rack attached and they fit in there, they don't take up a ton of space. I mean, you're dealing with a finite amount of space in your home gym, dedicating something like this to that. You just gotta make sure you're gonna use it. I think you gotta have back problems or something really to get a lot of benefit out of this because you're not able to squat with the bar because that would be my first recommendation. Okay, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. Let me know what you think in the comments. We'll see you next time. Peace.